Hi, now we're going to start looking at some more specific examples of application software, starting with development tools. So, development tools are a category of software which is used to make software development easier and more efficient. Right? The whole purpose of application software is to make things easier and more efficient, so you'll see that a lot. Now, by software development, really this means programming, it's you writing the code which can make up the software. So. Um, here are just a few different examples of development tools. The most essential, arguably, is a translator. So you can write program code in Notepad. You could write it any way you want on a computer. But to actually be able to convert it into a format that a computer can understand, you've got to use a translator. So the idea is we write the source code in English, or quite structured English, but it's still English. The translator will convert it to the binary equivalent that can be run by the computer. So uh, it translates it so the computer can run it. And a compiler is a particular type of translator, which is quite important you know about because a compiler produces an executable file. Now all that means is it makes a file which on its own can be used to run the program. What this means is, as a developer, once you compile your code, it means all you need to do is send the .exe file or whatever file type it is to the user and they can run your program. The source code can't be seen. So if a compiler produces a file which doesn't have the source code in, that's how closed source programs are made. It's compiled so the user can't see what the original code was. Not all translators are like this. A translator called interpreter needs to have the source code on your computer and so open source software could use an interpreter but it couldn't use a compiler. Or no, that's not quite true. It could use a compiler, but closed source must use a compiler. As you might know, writing code can be tricky. You can come, you can encounter lots of errors. Things don't often work first try. It's just how programming goes. As part of a challenge and the enjoyment, you could argue. So a debugger is a tool either separate or built into another tool, which is used to help find these errors, also called bugs. So. You might be able to do certain things like run code line by line. If you run a program, normally it will just carry on, maybe crashing if it reaches a problem. But a step through tool enables you to run it really slowly so that you can tell as soon as the issue happens, it will help you find where the issue was and hopefully try and fix it. So it's a really far way of going through line by line. Another example of a debugging tool you can learn, or you may have come across yourself even, are breakpoints. So a breakpoint is something you can add to your code to stop it at a certain point. Right, again, if you run it normally, if you open that .exe file, it would run normally until it finishes or crashes. But a breakpoint is where you tell the computer to stop running it at a certain point to pause effectively, and then you could go in, see what's going on, perhaps find where the bug was. Now, if you were learning Python or Java or any language, really, you probably wouldn't use these tools separately. You would use them together in something called an IDE. So an IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, also called, at least according to OCR, Integrated Design Environment. So the D could be de development or design. I've never, ever, ever heard de design being used, but OCR are in charge. Um, so an IDE is a combination of lots of related tools for programming. That is what integrated means. It integrates lots of similar but different tools in one application, so really useful. An example of what an IDE might provide, which none of the other tools might provide, is syntax highlighting. So the place where you write the code might highlight the different bits of code to make it more clear what is going on at each stage. So to give you an example of an IDE, this is Visual Studio by Microsoft. The code here is Visual Basic. Um, so if you don't recognize any of this stuff, it's fine. But the code in the middle here, this is the editor. You can see it's got colors. These colors are not important. They're not part of Visual Basic, but it helps you see the main areas of it. So for example, variables have got a blue color, um, including some of the keywords. Uh, strings have got red. Just makes it easier to read, is the idea. Um, it just is trying to be helpful. There's also other aspects here that we've got a debugger at the bottom left. It's showing you the different values and different stages of a program. Looks like there's a breakpoint hidden here as well. Um, and we've also got some analysis going on where it's showing you 
of the different processes. I said it was Visual Basic, it might be C Sharp actually looking over here. Anyway, you can see the different areas, they're built together, they're integrated, it's meant to be useful to the programmer.